Well, hi there. This is Scott Duffy from GetCloudSkills.com. And in this video, we're going to talk about a little used and a little talked about feature of storage accounts. It's been there for a while, but we don't even talk about it much in the courses or on the exams. And that's called the stored access policy. Now, when you have a storage account, a storage account contains blob containers, could be tables or queues uh, as well. And your blob container is a private container and contains some files. You want to share this file with somebody. How do you do that? Well, first thing you can do, of course, is to give someone full access to your storage account using the access keys. This is not something that you want to do. It is something that you want to keep your access keys fairly private. In fact, uh, these days you can even create storage accounts without access keys and simply rely on uh, Azure Active Directory for access. So access keys is sort of not a good idea to share to other people. Now, the other thing you can do is something called a shared access signature. So we have this file and I can say uh, generate SAS, shared access signature. Now we've been through this uh, before, but you can basically take your signing key, give a set of permissions, read, write, delete. Maybe in this case, I want read only access. You can make this access time limited. So let's say we want this person's access to expire on July 1st. You can even filter by IP address and allow protocols secure or insecure. When I say generate the SAS token, it's going to give me this token and or URL, which I can copy. And I could even paste this link into my browser and I would be able to see the PDF associated with that. So this PDF is being shared securely by anyone who has access to this shared access signature. Now the downside of the shared access signature is once you've generated this and you shared it, there's no easy way to revoke it. The only thing you can really do is to revoke your signing key, which could have some major consequences. Let's say you've created a bunch of these SAS uh, links revoking your signing key is going to kill them all. Or you're using this account in your production application. In order to change the signing key, you have to switch over to key two, regenerate key one. It's a bit of a hassle. So how can you share this file with somebody in a way that you can later revoke access or even extend access? That's where the stored access policy can come in. So let's go back to this um, this account here into this container. And if I go under here, I can see it says, um, oh, on the left here, it says access policy. Okay. This is for the container. Now I don't have any access policies, so I can create one. So let's, I want to call this my read only policy. I gave it my own name. And this person who has this policy is going to have only read permissions. I'm going to start the read permissions earlier this month, and I'm going to make the permissions go until uh, the end of the summer, August 31st, and say OK. Now, I really haven't, other than creating a policy, I really haven't done anything with this file just yet. I have to click Save. It does say it takes up to 30 seconds for this to take effect. So let's say I wanted to go back to this and create this with a policy. Well, I will give you a caveat that creating a shared access signature at this point does not let you choose a policy. So this interface is not sufficient for what we want to do. What we have to do is go back up to the storage account and go into Storage Explorer. Now in Storage Explorer, we can navigate to the test container and to the file. And if I right click on it, I can say get shared access signature. Now, in this case, you're going to see that I can choose the access policy associated with the signature. By default, there's none. And if I was to uh, create a, a read only permission, I could say creates and that would create me a normal uh, shared access signature. But I want this read only policy associated with it. So now I've chosen it and the date is now unchangeable. The permissions are unchangeable. Now I can say create. I can copy the URL and I can close. 
Now, just to verify, we can bring in our browser and open up this PDF once again. And we can see that with this um, policy, the stored access policy for this shared access signature, it still works. But here's sort of the magic part. Now I can go back to, let's go back to the containers, go to the uh, test container. I can look at access policies. And what if I was to expire this policy? So now I'm going to say, you know what? I changed my mind. I don't want this person to have this um, permission anymore. So I'm going to go to a date that's in the past. So this date is from last week. So now I've modified the policy after the fact. All right. So let's now say, we, remember, we, we were able to use the shared access signature with a stored access policy to access this file. All right. So now that we've revoked the uh, stored access policy or expired it, can we reload this page with the same credentials? Suddenly, the authentication failed. So with using a stored access policies, we can actually revoke shared access signatures that are created with it by either deleting the policy or expiring the policy. We could even do the opposite. We can ex extend the permissions for somebody who needs access to something a bit longer. Now, there are some limitations for stored access policies. Most significantly, there is a maximum of five access policies that can be set on a container table queue or a file share at any given time. So if you're going to end up sharing a file to 20 people, no, you can't create 20 different policies, but you can have two or three of them. And hopefully they're, um, if you need to change it, it's not such a big deal if you say, okay, I had to uh, give you a new SAS token. So this is convenient for giving specific access to a container or to a file uh, to someone, and then you want to be able to modify those permissions after sending it to them, but very limited in terms of that. Uh, anyways, that's the, st the uh, stored access policy. I found that to be, like I said, we haven't talked about that in this course for years. I think I, I talked about it uh, four years ago, and then in subsequent exam objectives, it was no longer on the exam. But you can still, in a production setting, use these kind of policies to um, ensure that you're giving access to your containers and files on a very fine-grained way and be able to revoke those access without having to go through the inconvenience of regenerating your storage key. Well, this has been Scott Duffy. I th hope you found that interesting. This, If you like this video, I do really appreciate your thumbs up. I really do appreciate that. Hit the subscribe button if uh, you find this content interesting and I can continue to create content like this. I hope you have a really great day.